Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Havoc here. Today, I'll be showing you how to make this YouTube banner in Pixlr. This video has been highly requested by a lot of you and it will be an updated version of my most popular video on the channel. So I hope you guys do enjoy. And if this video does help you out, a like would be appreciated. Once this video hits 500 likes, I will provide a download link to the final file that I'll be making. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click on the first link in the description. That will take you to this page right here. And you're just gonna want to click on Advanced Pixlr E right here. And then we're gonna click on Create New. And then over here we can change the title. So I'll just name it Banner. And the width, 2560 by 1440. And I'll go ahead and turn on the background. Just leave it white. Okay, so this is gonna be our blank canvas. Uh, go to the second link in the description and that will take you to this page right here. And I've compiled all the different files I'll be using for this tutorial. So all the images and all the social media icons in this. So just click the blue button right here. It'll download that. And then we're gonna go search up our fonts while that is downloading. I'm gonna be using Animal Silence. This will be the third link in the description and this will be the fourth link. I'll also be using Conviction, this font as well. There are plenty of other fonts on Defont.com so you can go to themes and search up some different topics. So maybe Basic Sans Serif. Bebis Nui is a great font. There are a ton of other fonts. You can go to different themes as well. But once you find a font that you wanna download, just click this download button right here. So we'll go ahead and download Animal Silence as well. And it will just go ahead and download. We'll go to show in folder. And all we have to do is just drag these onto our desktop, exit out of that, and just open up one of the zip folders. So the file that you want to take out and drag onto the desktop should be an OTF or a TTF file. So just click and drag that. And then it'll show up as kind of like a text file. That looks like that. So we'll do that for conviction as well. Drag that to the desktop. All we have to do to get these fonts on Pixlr, go back to Pixlr, we'll just drag this over here. We just simply just drag that into here. And obviously it already exists, same as conviction. So it should be installed in Pixlr now. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna get the images out of this zip folder, the one that I provided. So just click and just drag all of them onto your desktop. I can simply just drag this template file, the gray one, into here, and we're going to add the current file that we're using. That should cover up your entire canvas. And the cool thing about the new and updated Pixlr is that it like auto centers, which is very nice. I don't think that was a feature in the last tutorial. Really the only important takeaway of this is just to put all your important info in this dark gray area. So whatever device it is, it'll show up on everybody's device. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drag in my space background into here and just add to current and we can just go ahead and resize it. When you're resizing in the new and updated Pixlr, it will automatically stay as fixed unless you switch this button to free and then the ratio can be uh, distorted. So I'm gonna keep it on fixed and have it just about here. And if you are looking for background images, something that is large, I would actually check out unsplash.com. That's where I got this background from. And this will be the fifth link in the description. And each of these are uncopyrighted and they are also very high quality. Like if I click on any of these, the size, if we click on the down arrow, the size of these are much larger than the overall banner. So none of these will actually become pixelated. I kind of want to see the template behind this image. So I'm going to click on the three dots and change the transparency to like 65 for now. Change the name to space so we can actually decipher what this layer is. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the text tool and click anywhere, click add, and your fonts should show up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in my channel name for now. We don't even have to highlight the text. We can just go and change it, change the color to white for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change the size to like 180. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of the text Unfortunately, we have to rasterize the text before we do so. I have not found another way on the updated Pixlr to do this. So what we have to do is go to layer and rasterize text slash element. 
Now you want to make sure that this is what you want your text to say because you will not be able to edit after rasterizing it. You're going to want to click on select and then select pixels and that will select your entire text right here if you're clicked on the correct layer. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a gradient because I don't want just a solid color, I want it to kind of change. So we can go up to this color bar right here and we can change the color by clicking on either one and then clicking right here. So if I want it to be a little more bright, I can do so. Maybe I don't want it to be exactly black, but maybe I want it to be very dark purple we could do that. Go ahead and click out of that and we just click and drag. And that is the opposite of what I actually want. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll click on the lasso tool and then just double click. Go ahead and create an inner glow just to kind of light up the outer edges of the text to make it stand out. So inner glow and we can change the size, make it probably about six pixels and change the color to just like a hot pink maybe even brighter than that. I think that looks pretty good. You can create more of a feather so it kind of blends in with the inner part of the letter. And I'll just go ahead and lower the opacity to like 80. Click apply. Next, we're going to add a drop shadow effect so our text actually looks 3D. So go to filter, drop shadow, and I'm gonna change the color to something along the lines of at the bottom of the text so it kind of matches. Click OK, change the opacity to 100, blur to 0, offset to 0 on the x-axis so that this shadow is directly down south, not at an angle. And then the Y, I'm going to make probably about 25 pixels down and click Apply. As you can see, there are some spaces in between. All we really have to do to fill these in is go to our lasso tool and click polygonal and we're going to make a new layer so click on this plus icon right here and click on empty and this is the main reason why i put the shadow directly down so that you wouldn't have to worry about angles we're just going to fill in these areas that are missing so click directly down and it'll kind of snap it into place so next we're going to click on the eyedropper tool right here and basically click on the same color as your drop shadow click on it and then go over to your paintbrush tool and we can basically just paint inside there and as you can see it goes over our text all we have to do to fix that is drag our uh, shadow layer below our text layer let's say you make a mistake like we obviously don't want to paint out here so you can just press escape to go back you don't have to redo everything all we really need to do is just merge both of these layers so obviously you have your text layer above the shadow layer so we'll simply just click on our text layer which is above click on the three dots and then click on merge down and this will merge the layer that is beneath the layer that you are selecting so it'll merge both of these layers together so now when you drag everything it drags your uh, shadows as well and then we can just drag in our Instagram add the current and then we'll just resize this uh, pretty far down just do that for now and then drag our Twitter in add the current and drag that down as well. And all I have to do if I wanna move my Twitter over here is hold on the shift button so it keeps it on that X axis so it's not kind of shifted. Um, so I'll probably put it like somewhere around there and put my Instagram somewhere around over here. Obviously I wanna change it to be the same color as the text so I can just click on it, select pixels, and then we can go to the eyedropper tool and select maybe something around in the middle of this text, so maybe something like that. Click on the paintbrush and just color that in. And then we'll do the same thing on the Twitter. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add the social media names. So I'm gonna click anywhere, click add, and we're gonna make sure the color is white and I'm gonna change the font to conviction. The size will be about 30, so I'm just gonna go ahead and double click and write in my social media name which is the HAVOC in all caps. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click duplicate layer and hold on the shift button so it's in line on the Y axis. And we're gonna go ahead and change the size to be 20 and the color will be something in the middle of this text. So I think I'm gonna pick that and then we'll just say Instagram. So now we can just go ahead and duplicate uh, both of these 
and just drag them over and copy the same thing. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and merge all of these layers so they don't shift around. Now you obviously don't wanna do this if you want to edit the text later on. So I'm gonna click on the three dots, merge down and just keep doing that um, until we have all of our layers merged. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a rectangle just so that this text isn't completely lost. So I'm gonna go over to the shape tool right here and I will go ahead and add a new layer. So go to empty and make sure our bottom color down here is black because that's what I will be using. Opacity 100 stroke, uh, which is the outline. I don't want any, any outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag it all the way across um, and just make it kind of overlap our text just enough. Click at the arrow button right here. I'm just gonna want to drag that below our social media text and then click on the three dots and change the transparency to about like, I would say maybe 50. Let's go ahead and merge uh, the rectangle and our text. So click on our text, which should be above and then click the merge down button right here. So now this is merged. All right, so next I'm going to add black rectangles on the top and bottom, uh, which is pretty easy. So we're just gonna click on the shape tool once again and just click and drag, make sure we don't have an outline. And we'll do that to that line right there. Click the arrow button and we actually just bring that down so it meets. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this text real quick. So edit, free transform. And we wanna make sure the rotation is the same for the social media and the channel name, but I don't want to combine the layers just yet. So I'm gonna rotate it at about 350, which you can see right here. Click the arrow button. And now we'll do the same thing for our social media. So rotate it to about um, 350.1, the same rotation. And I want this to be aligned right here. All right, so next I will be adding these flares on the side so it kind of frames the uh, space background. So go over to your images, the ones that I provided, and just click and drag. And we can change the color of this by going to adjustment, hue and saturation, and we can change this accordingly. And I think I kind of want it to be something along these lines so that Mobile doesn't see the entire edge, but sees most of it, maybe something like that. And then we'll just click yes. And I'm also going to duplicate that and I will edit, transform, flip it horizontal. And then we're gonna go to adjustment, hue and saturation. And I think I want this other side to kind of be like, almost like a green blue sort of color. So maybe something along these lines. So now we move these layers below, go ahead and change the transparency to all the way so that we have our full entire space background right here. I'm going to make a little effect on this rectangle. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle and then click on the eraser tool. Make sure it's pretty high up there with size. So I'm gonna put it at like 850 softness pretty much around here. And we're just gonna go ahead and erase the edge right here. So it kind of gives a little depth of field. The next thing we're going to do is make some rectangles on both of these different sides to frame this space background. So click on the rectangle tool right here, click new layer, empty, change the color to be something a little darker than our actual flare. So I will actually click on the flare and then just maybe slide it a little further down to green and maybe make it pretty dark. Go to edit, free transform, and we can just rotate it to be along these lines and then move that a little further out. Click yes, make sure this layer is below our flare and that works out pretty well. And I'm just gonna cut this out by selecting the lasso tool, going over to the polygonal and we're just gonna go ahead and outline this. Obviously, we don't wanna delete what's, what's inside the circle, so we can just right click and invert selection, and we just have to simply press delete. And I'm also going to add this texture that I got from the graphics pack as well. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag that, add to current, and change the size. I'm also gonna go to edit, uh, free transform and kind of change the size so that it holds everything that's kind of pretty important. Click yes, drag this below everything, including our rectangle. 
and then our colored rectangle will go ahead and switch the opacity to like 50 so go to adjustment hue and saturation and change the hue to match our flare we will go to the lasso tool click polygonal and just click alongside the flare it doesn't really have to be perfect because the flare will hide the the cut of this even if it's bad once you are pretty happy with your finished product all you have to do is go to file save and we can save this uh, as a jpeg but i personally prefer png click download you want to change your banner go to your channel page and we're just going to click on this camera button right here and that will take you to this page right here and we can just click on change for our banner image and go to our downloads button your last download should be the banner that you just made so go ahead and open that we can just click on done and we want to make sure we click on publish right here go to our channel link right here now we have a changed banner and it looks a lot better if this video did help you out a like would be very much appreciated and subscribe it's been your boy havoc here and i'm out peace